Let's talk some Torah. It's Parshat Vayeshev. We begin the final third of the book of Breshit, the book of Genesis, and it moves very quickly. So for us to understand where we are headed, it's always important to take stock of where we've been. I had the fortune yesterday of being present with a gathering of Christian, Muslim, and Jewish clergy uh, in Westchester, New York, where for some of us it was a reunion from the multi-faith uh, trip that we had uh, it to Israel, a mission where it wasn't actually about Israel, but it was about exploring each other and blessing each other. It was something very special. Yesterday, with the leadership of two members of that cohort, Reverend Dr. Martha Jacobs and Rabbi David Shuck, two extraordinary extraordinary clergy friends. Um, we gathered together and learned from a professor from Columbia whose name is George Bonanno, and he has a few books, extraordinary books to his name, the most recent of which is called The End of Trauma, How the New Science of Resilience is Changing How We Think About PTSD. That's actually what I want to connect um, with this Parsha for our own learning today. It's not that I, I am an expert at what Professor Bonanno was teaching us, but <clears throat> it was beautiful, beautiful to hear him share scientific data that shows the innate resilience that so many um, people have. But what is extraordinary to see <clears throat> is that in the aftermath of the pandemic, or as it wanes, please God, some of us show different measures of resilience, but there are messages that I took from his teaching, I hope that I'll represent it well, that can connect to this Parsha and to our lives. So let's start with the Parsha, work our way back into the science a little bit, and then wish each other a good day. If you re remember, Jacob, uh, the beginning of this Parsha is, Vayeshev um, Yaakov Beretz Migure Aviv Beretz Knaan. He, Jacob, um, settled in the place where his ancestors dwelled, in the land of Canaan. And as I shared yesterday, the power of this desire, the yearning for home, is the yearning to feel settled. He is an extraordinary human being who has gone through so much. I'm not going to recount all of the ordeals that he has been through, but I'd like us to think about it on a personal level. We have each been through so much. Now that can be a collective experience, it can be a personal experience, but how do we deal with the impact of all of that stuff that we have been through? Sometimes we make conscious effort to process our past experiences, and sometimes our bodies and our psyches do their own inner work because of the blessing of their design. As a religious Jew, I look to God with gratitude that my body knows how to heal from a cut because I couldn't decide to heal from a cut. My body knows. As I sleep, my body breathes. It's as if what Professor Bonanno was saying could apply to what Jacob was capable of doing, which was incredible resilience in the face of deep trauma. And we use the word trauma to describe all manner of things. But what the commentators say about Jacob's desire to settle just to feel home, to feel safe, is extraordinary because here he is, Jacob, after all of the things he's been through, just wishing to settle down. And the, the Midrash in Breshit Rabbah says, Miad kafatz alav ma'ase Yosef, immediately pounced upon him the episodes of Joseph. And in this week's Parsha, we are introduced to Joseph, who will be the chosen one of the next generation, a real pivot point from the family story to the nation story. And it doesn't start well, we know this, because Joseph, favored by his father, again, a lot to talk about there, is resented by his brothers, who eventually sell him into servitude, abandon him to merchants who sell him in Egypt, and then tell their father Jacob, the very one we've been speaking about, who wishes for safety and home and settledness. They tell their father that Joseph has died. And Jacob says, My soul will descend Evel Sheola, mourning of Sheol. Sheol. Sheol is a biblical word which means netherworld. I will just sink to the ground, which can be one response to terrible tragedy. But it's important to remember that he does not. He is able. I don't know how to say recover after all of this, 
but he is able to remain alive so that one day he can embrace life again and because of the miraculous nature of our story hold his son one more time but he is able through it all to endure and that actually is an incredible skill i don't know that any of us has paused enough to handle what the pandemic has meant i don't know that any one of us has truly taken on the responsibility of continuing to process all of the upheavals that have come our way during the time of the pandemic, which were not the pandemic, including the murder of George Floyd and the partial reckoning that America has with its own internal racism. I don't know that we've actually begun to process this very changed face of Israel that will demand more of us as Zionists, as lovers of Israel, it will become ever more essential for us to double down on our commitment to bringing values of humanism, pluralism, tolerance, and values-based celebration to our homeland. There's going to be enormous work ahead, but the interesting thing is, and this is what I derive from Professor Bonanno most of all for this moment, we actually have it in us to live forward. Sometimes we have to process it. We think about it explicitly, but often it's who we are manifest. I don't take it for granted, and I don't assume it, nor should I say that everyone has it in equal quotients in every moment. But friends, one of the gifts of being imbued with a divine image, which every human being is, is somehow the ability to be in this world and to live forward through time. Because over and over, we are presented with traumas, disruptions. When they're minor, they're bumps in the road. And when they are significant, they are full stops here and there. But somehow within our spirit is the ability to live forward. And let me share a philosophical framework for that that also relates to our Parsha. See, what I'm doing with my hand is making the sign of a circle. There is a philosophical concept called the eternal return. Religious sociologists and historians have suggested that one of the uses of ritual and sacred text is to relive moments from the mythic past, said in a little bit more English English. When we have Seder on Passover, on Pesach, everyone is called to see themselves ki'ilu yatsami mitzrayim, as if they themselves, I myself, left Egypt which means I'm supposed to relive the experience, to re-encounter, to inhabit the ancestors. But what's also powerful, and this is a lesson derived from uh, Professor Yosef Yerushalmi and Rabbi Jonathan Sachs, both of blessed memory, we also live forward through time. We do not see everything as a cycle where, this is what uh, Yerushalmi said in one of his most famous books, Zachor, this week we witness Joseph being sold into slavery and thrown into a pit. Next week he will emerge out of slavery, and the week after that he will ascend to the throne. Next year he will be thrown into the pit again. We are not condemned to repeat the trauma of the past. We're not. We're not. It is so important for us to see that history moves forward through time. Our rituals bring us back into encounters with our mythic past. But it's all for the purpose of processing where we've been so that we can see where we dream to be. So that Jacob's dream from the beginning of the Parsha to have a settledness where his ancestors did not, that might actually become more true for our children and their children. Yes, we are facing enormous struggles, but we always have, and here we are. Perhaps the most important lesson that I learned from Professor Bonanno yesterday and from my friends, Christian, Muslim, and Jewish clergy, by my shoulders, it felt beautiful to be together. Perhaps the most important thing I learned was that self-talk can also serve as external affirmation, which means I can say to myself, as not just a cheerleader, but as an influence on my own blood's health, on my own mental health, on my sense of hope and well-being in the world, I can say, I will manage. The definition of trauma, according to Freud, 
well, let me say this. Someone who is healing from trauma is someone who's healthy can say, I can love, I can work. And by those phrases, it means I can be in relationship and experience emotions. Work doesn't mean professional labor. It means I can do things. I can manage. So friends, I encourage, I encourage you to say these words. It might sound silly, but do it when no one's watching because they're true. They're true about you. They're true about every one of us. I can love. I can work. That doesn't mean there won't be more challenges ahead, and it doesn't mean we're done with the ones from the past. We're not. Not in our moment, not in Jacob's moment, not in Joseph's moment. But friends, we are right here. We're ready. We're ready for the next moment. This is how we were built. What a gift it is to have a human spirit, which is another way of saying to hold some of the divine in the Holy of Holies, your heart. You've got this. We've got each other. What a great thing that is. What a blessing it is to wake and to be ready to live into the next moment. Holding what I can hold, letting go of what I can let go of, but never ever ceasing to dream. All right, friends, deep breath. Let's sing our way into a good day, because in the spirit of what we've shared today, it's going to be a good one. Bless you, friends. See you soon. Have a good day.